This is a really cool factorial problem. Let's explore how to do it. So m times the product of many factorials is a perfect square. What is the minimum value of m such that this happens? So the key idea here is obviously if you're trying to evaluate this, good luck. That's not going to be very easy. So we're going to look at the prime factors of this number. We want to look for the prime factorization. And to do that, all we have to do is look for how many factors of two are there. Let's just do this one by one for each prime. So starting off, how many factors of two are there? Well, the, a nice little trick we can do here is see that, okay, all of these are multiples of two factorial, right? So they're all going to have a factor of at least one factor of two in them, 15. Now, but the thing is, all the values that are four or more will have an additional factor of four. So for four to 16, there's 13 of these factorials between four and 16. And each of these 13 extra values will have two more factors of two, right? Because four is two squared. Each of these 13 factorials will have an extra two factors of two in them. So 13 times two we can add. Now, what about six factorial? Well, six is, doesn't have, it's not a multiple of four. So for all the factorials from six to 16, which is 11 of them, we have an additional power of two, so plus 11. And then we can kind of keep going with this logic. For eight, well, eight has three factors of two, and the, all the values from eight to 16, well, there's nine of those factorials. So nine, factor, nine of these factorials from eight factorial to 16 factorial have a factor of eight, which has three prime factors. So just so you know, this is the total prime factors of two. Okay, and then 10, well, 10, 10 has one factor of two, 10 to 16, there's 7 of them. So 7 times 7, just 7 times 1, right? 12. 12 is 2 factors of 2. 12 to 16, there's five, 5 of those numbers. So 5 times 2. What's next? 14. 14 has 1 factor of 2. So from 14 to 16, there's 3 of those numbers. So just 3 times 1. And then finally, 16. 16 just has it's only one number which has a, has a 16 in it, and that's an additional the so one times four, because 16 has four factors of two. So the key thing here is in order to determine whether M is a perfect square, we only care about the parity of this number. Because if it's odd, then we need another factor of two. And if it's even, we don't need another factor of two in M. So we're gonna, just gonna ignore all these even terms, right? Because we only care about the parity. So that's even, that's even, that's even. And now we just add up these remaining odd terms, right? 15 plus 11, are 26, and that's even, so we can cross these both out. 27 plus seven is even, so we cross that out, and we're left with three, which is odd. So all in all, the number of prime factors of two is something odd, right? Or we can just say it's equivalent to one mod two. So therefore, we need a factor of two. So automatically, we can eliminate one choice. Great, now we just continue this logic, but now we do for three. And I'm going to go through this one a little bit faster, but it's the exact same idea. From 3 to 16, we have 14 factorials, so 14. From 6 to 16, we have 11, so an additional 11. From 9 to 16, we have 8, but 9 has two factors of 3, so we have an additional 8 times 2 factors of 3. Now 12, 12 has just one factor of 3, so 12 to 16. There's five numbers with an additional factor of 3. Okay, 15, well, 15 has, again, one factor of three. So we just do, we just do, th we have two numbers which have one factor of three in them, additionally. And again, we just don't care about the even terms. We just cross out, cross out, cross out, and we're left with something that's even. So we can automatically eliminate all the choices that are a multiples of three. Aha, so now we're down to two choices. So if you're smart, you'll realize, okay, both of these have multiples of five in them. So we can just assume p equals 5 automatically works. I mean, if you really wanted to, you can check by the same logic we did. But based on these choices, they both have factors of 5 in them. So we know it has to work. Now the question is, will 7 work? Because if 7 is odd, then our answer is going to be C. And otherwise, it has to be D. 
So P equals 7. We do the same analysis here. From 7 to 16, we have 10 such numbers. From four, so we have 10 factors of, of 7 there. From 14 to 16, we have 3 additional factors of 7. So we have 13 total factors of 7, which is 1 mod 2. And therefore, we need a factor of 7. So automatically, we can say that, okay, this must be our answer. And, and now again, if you really wanted to, you can verify that 11 and 13 really don't work, right? We have five, just five factors of 11, or we have, sorry, six factors of 11, because 11 to 16, and then we have four factors of 13, 13 to 16. So we can see these don't, we don't need a factor of 11 or 13 in the end. And that's it, 70 is our answer. The key trick is just realizing that we, we're gonna have to use this kind of logic here, we just look for how many numbers, how many of these factorials have a 2 in them. Then how many of these factorials have a 4 in them. All the way till how many of these factorials have a 16 in them. And then we kind of apply the same logic. And we only care about the parity of the number of prime factors. Because that will help us decide, does M need another prime factor or not? Hope you enjoyed.